Hi, I'm Michael. Take a seat and I'll teach you how to play Zephyr Winds of Change by Portal Dragon. A cooperative game of steampunk aerial combat and adventure. When setting up the game, have each player pick a ship to captain. Then take the ship mat, the standee, the base action cards and the token that have the matching symbol. Also take the target with the matching colour, plus a scrap meter and a reference card. Then you'll need to pick which mission you're going to play and I'd recommend that you start with plain and simple as it's the easiest of the missions. The symbols here tell you how to construct your assignment deck, so in this case we want to include any with an eyeglass. Separate the assignments that have the matching symbol, take these and then shuffle them to be your assignment deck. Next the players need to outfit their ships and you can find example setups on the back of the rule book and I'd suggest for your first game that you use these. Otherwise the mission card says what supplies you start with to outfit your ship. Scrap is the game's currency and you'll use it to buy upgrades and crew. Upgrades come in four ranks that determine the cost. Bronze is 10 scrap, silver 20, gold 30, and epic you can't buy but get as rewards during the game. There are also two different types of upgrades, hull and ship systems. Hull upgrades are only a token and are placed in the corresponding spaces on the left of your ship mat. These are your ship's health. Ship system upgrades consist of a token and a matching card. The token is placed on your ship mat where the symbol that's in the corner matches. So you have attack, maneuver or tech. The card is then shuffled into your action deck. Crew costs 20 scrap and are made up of a faction card which you choose and then also one of these clear personalities chosen at random. Each crew member is placed in one of these crew stations at the bottom of your ship mat. The symbol above it represents the type of action card that that crew can then play. Once all ships are outfitted, you will then need to shuffle the rest of the card decks. Regions, skirmish cards, scavenge cards, enemy ships and commanders. Place the cubes and dice nearby and you're ready to begin. You'll win the game by completing your mission but no matter the mission, the structure of the game is the same. The game is made up of days where each space along this track on the mission card is one day. Each day has five phases. One, move, where you select your assignment or progress on your existing one. Two, explore, where you resolve the space you are on. Three, complete assignment, where you gain rewards for any assignments you've survived. Four, return to the resupply, if you've completed your assignment or you're giving up on it and five trade where you swap items with other players the first thing you do in the move phase is move this cube to the next day or place it on the track for the first day symbols on the track mark mission events which the missions text will explain how to resolve as you can see the track is split into sections Tier 1 region, Tier 2 region and Tier 3 region. Whenever the cube enters a new region, including on the first day, you reveal a new region card that replaces any already out. This card will have special rules on it for while you're in that region. These could be good or bad for you. Then give each player not on an assignment an assignment card. They then choose to either embark on the assignment placing their standee on the first day space marked by the arrow, or they discard the card. Next, regardless on if you entered a new region, all players that haven't just embarked on a new assignment decide where they want to move to. If they were already on assignment, they'll move along the dashed lines to the next day space of their choice. If they're not on an assignment, they have two options. One, join another player who's started an assignment this day, placing your standee on one of the ally spaces available or to go on patrol placing your standee on the region card. There is no restriction on how many ships 
can do this. With everyone having determined where they're going, it's now time to explore. What happens is determined by the space you're on. And allies count as being on the same space as the assignment owner. Spaces with a question mark on are the most common, and being on the region card counts as the same thing. Each individual player on one of these spaces draws either a red skirmish card for combat related endeavours, or a blue scavenge card for other explorations. These will typically result in reactions and or battles. Reactions will look something like this and will tell you to draw your action cards. You can find how many cards you draw on your ship mat under its name. Each reaction will say on it what you need to do, typically play cards of a certain type. As the captain, you are able to play one card of any type from your hand. You can also play a card corresponding to the symbol above each of your crew. Additionally, you can use any of the abilities of your crew by flipping the card onto its cooldown side. Abilities that say once per trip will not be usable again until you have returned to the supply. Those with once per day will flip back to their usable side at the start of each day. Battles occur any time you have to draw a ship and are unable to discard it due to the event or an ability. When you draw a ship, you add white cubes to any crew and systems with matching or lower number than the current mission tier to indicate that they're active. So here we would have one and one. If we were in tier two, we would also mark those labeled with a two. Battles consist of an attack and regroup phase that repeat until only one side has ships remaining. The attack phase has three parts. One, declare targets. Two, draw cards and player actions. And three, resolve enemy actions. Declaring targets is most important when there are multiple ships in the combat. Each ship can only target one ship. But multiple ships can target the same ship. For the player ships, place their target tokens on the enemy they're targeting. The enemies don't have to target the same ships targeting them, and the players can choose which ship they do target. Then players draw cards and play actions in the same way as was described for reactions. All cards played sit in front of you, and if they interact with an enemy ship, don't take effect until the resolve enemy action step. This is because all actions resolve simultaneously. Which means you can't just blow your enemies out of the sky before they get a shot off. Start the resolve enemy action step beginning with commanders and then from the highest to lowest number of cubes on them. Each ship rolls one dice for its captain plus one for each crew it has. So if we were in tier two, they would get an additional dice. You compare each roll to that ship's table. So here we have five to six, nothing happens. Any damage goes to the target selected earlier. If the player has any evades or damage reduction cards in front of them, they can choose to apply it to this damage. Any attacks not evaded and that damage isn't completely reduced cause you to flip a whole upgrade per point of damage. So that'd be one and two. And you always start with the upgrade at the top. The silver armour hole will flip back and be undamaged at the start of the next day. The bronze structure hole upgrades do not repair until you return to the resupply. Any evades or reductions rolled by the enemy will apply to the attack targeting it that is doing the most damage first. Then the highest rank system and finally in the order played. Any damage to the enemy that is not evaded or reduced causes them to lose a cube off of their hull. Next is the regroup phase of the battle. Any enemy ships with no cubes on hull upgrades are destroyed and removed from the battle. Put them to the side until the end of the battle. If any player ships have all of their hull upgrades damaged, they are also out of the battle and even the assignment. They immediately return to the resupply, so place their standee on their ship mat. Any uninstalled systems they were carrying are lost. Not only that, 
but they have taken critical damage and roll on this table to determine the effect. Once you know who is still alive, other players who are either in your assignment or on patrol with you and are not in a battle are able to join you in your battle. Players then discard all cards played that round and any cards they wish from their hands. If you keep any cards in hand, so say I did have one card in hand, that would reduce the number of cards you draw by that number. So I would draw just one, so I'm drawn up to a hand size of two. If at the end of a regroup phase, only enemy ships remain, then the battle is over. If only players' ships remain, then they have won and proceed to the salvage phase. In either case, players discard all cards played and in their hands. For each enemy ship destroyed in the combat, the survivor rolls dice based on the salvage table. If you are the only surviving ship, simply add the result to your scrap meter. If you had allies helping you in the battle and they survived, you may distribute the scrap as you see fit. If it was a group battle, then whoever was the main target of the ship when it was destroyed gets its scrap. If they survived. Let's go back to the spaces you can be on when exploring. Spaces marked with a letter are unique to that assignment and it will say on the card how to resolve. Also, allies on this assignment deal with the event together. The angry cog and crossbone symbol is the commander icon and means you draw a commander that all ships on the assignment face. If you draw a ship as you would for any combat then draw a commander card, which covers up the right of the ship card, replacing its abilities. Also, the bottom table is what you roll in the salvage phase of battle, instead of rolling for scrap. If you receive any upgrades, you can't use them until you've returned to the resupply to install them. For now, just place them beside your ship map. The final thing to note with this card is that under the name, it will say how many additional ships you need to draw. These are drawn in the normal way as already covered. Once everyone has resolved their exploring, it's then the complete assignments phase. If you have completed the card's goal, then the assignment owner may distribute the rewards listed on the card between themselves and all allies as they wish. They then discard the assignment and draw a new one. Then in the return to resupply phase, anyone who has completed their assignment or was patrolling must return. Placing their standee back on their ship map. Anyone on an assignment can choose to abandon it and return. If they were the only person on the assignment, the assignment's then discarded. However, if they were the assignment owner and there was allies on the assignment, they must first nominate a new assignment owner. Upon returning to the resupply, all hull upgrades are immediately repaired, flipping back to the non-broken side. And all crew and ship's abilities are flipped so that they're no longer on cooldown. Also, while at the resupply, you can freely spend scrap to purchase new upgrades and crew, as discussed during the outfitting stage of setup. Then either sell any of the upgrades you have for half their value, or install them. The final phase is the trade phase. Each player may give either a ship system, crew or scrap to another ship at their location and they may receive either a crew, ship system or scrap from another ship at their location. You then continue to a new day. The game ends when you either successfully complete your mission or fail it and each mission will make it clear how you can do so. There are then just a few other things to be aware of. When drawing a crew personality, you might draw a companion. These have next to the name that they are a companion, and when you draw one, you keep it and then draw another personality to add it to, giving the crew extra powers. The last thing to be aware of is Warlords, which you shouldn't need to worry about in your first game. If your mission has this skull symbol on the day track, then it has a warlord. At the start of the mission, you build the warlord by drawing a personality card. 
In the top left of this, it tells you how many ability and wave cards to give him, which remain face down until you reach the Warlord in the mission. At that point, you start the Warlord battle. Reveal the ability cards and place cubes on the Warlord's hull. Then reveal the top wave card and add ships as instructed. You then fight these ships in the normal way, except that you can't target the Warlord and at the start of the resolve enemy action step, each player must roll on each of the Warlord's ability cards to see what the Warlord does against them. If in the regroup phase all enemy ships are destroyed, rather than the battle ending, discard the current wave card and reveal the next one and resolve it in the same way. Once there are no remaining wave cards, you enter the final battle with the Warlord himself. If in the regroup phase the Warlord has no hole remaining and at least one player has survived, then he is defeated and you win. And that is everything you need to know to play Zephyr Winds of Change by Portal Dragon. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel, as well as sharing and subscribing the channel. And as always, thanks for watching, and bye for now.